The IR radiometer measures the temperature of an object by measuring the infrared radiation of the object. Let's say the temperature of the object we're trying to measure is T target. Because the object contains some thermal energy, it radiates some heat in the form of infrared light given by the Planck's law of blackbody radiation. Let's call this amount of radiation E target. However, there's also some background radiation, for instance from the sun or nearby bodies. Let's call this background radiation E background. Then we can ask the question, what is the sensor actually measuring? There's a constant defined for different surfaces called the emissivity. For perfect black bodies, this constant is 1, and for perfect emitters, the emissivity is 0. Most surfaces such as asphalt and vegetation have emissivities close to 1, but it's not always the case. In that case, we see that the sensor is actually measuring some level of background radiation in addition to the radiation emitted by the target object. When we substitute in the stefan boltzmanns law, we can isolate for the target temperature, noting how the measured temperature is dependent on the background radiation. One method to improve this measurement is to fully press the IR radiometer against the surface, thus blocking out most of the background radiation. This simplifies the equation to the following. While we still have the emissivity as part of the equation, when we raise it to the power of 1 over 4, it reduces the error in the measured temperature. We can see this in a plot of the ratio between the measured temperature and the true temperature and how for emissivities more than 0.8, the error is less than 5%. Most emissivities of objects in the field are above 0.95, so the error is quite small. Finally, you can measure the emissivity coefficient by using a thermocouple to measure the target temperature and then calculating the emissivity through this equation using the IR radiometer's measured temperature. This is something that you can do in the lab. Let's have a look at what this means in terms of your field measurement technique. Here, I'm measuring the temperature of my notebook, which clearly reflects some fraction of the incident light. When I take a measurement right up against the surface, I block out all the light and thus only measure radiation emitted from the target surface. When I take a measurement a few centimeters higher, I get another higher reading, since the sensor is actually measuring the reflected radiation in addition to the emitted radiation from the notebook. For this reason, Take all your measurements with the IR radiometer right up against the surface to block out the background radiation. For the albedometer and NDVI sensors, we need our handheld sensor mount to hold the upwards and downwards facing sensors simultaneously. The sensor mount is screwed into the top of the metal rod. Then the metal rod screws into a 3D printed grip and is held in place by a set screw. There is also a small bubble level on the handheld mount to keep it horizontal. Now let's go ahead and configure the albedometer. The albedometer measures albedo, which is a ratio of the reflected light intensity to the incident light intensity on the surface. Essentially, it measures how well an object reflects light and thermal radiation. It measures this via two sensors, an upward facing and a downward facing light intensity sensor. The upwards facing sensor is always the one with the plastic diffuser to enable light to enter from a large range of angles. Let's go ahead and configure this to our data logger and attach it to our handheld mount. Like before, we have to pair it to our phone via the Apogee Connect app. We also have to enter in the calibration constants from the spreadsheet. We can see in the app that there are two values of measured light intensity. Indoors, the values are quite noisy since the sensors are made for outdoor use, where the light intensity is much higher. We conducted an independent experiment to find out what the field of view for the albedometer is, to find out how far above the surface to hold it. Turns out it's around 125 degrees. This means that you should hold the sensor about 5 centimeters above the surface that you are measuring. We can configure some logging settings and then get some test logs for later use in MATLAB. As mentioned in lecture, the normalized difference vegetation index has been shown to be a good measure of vegetation health and is able to distinguish between greenery and man-made surfaces. You can calculate the NDVI with the following equation using the measured light intensity for NIR and red wavelengths of light. However, to calibrate our measurements for the incoming light intensity, we require both an upwards and a downwards facing sensor. For the NDVI sensor, hold the sensor about 4 cm above the surface you are trying to measure.
However, this time we have to set up both our data loggers to simultaneously take measurements. We can do so by setting up the logging settings as we did before, but this time we have to do it for both data loggers. Ensure that the time is synced on both data loggers like earlier too. To take measurements, we have to start both measurements simultaneously by holding down both data loggers buttons for 10 seconds, and then record the time that we are taking the measurement in our lab notebook. Taking many measurements is especially important for NDVI since it is a calculated ratio and so there, it is very sensitive to noisy data. To take your measurements, you should first identify a patch of surface area that you are attempting to survey using your meter stick. Here I've done it with a masking tape on my table. Then you can go in approximately a snake pattern to cover the entire surface area of your patch while your data loggers measure the NDVI at all the points as shown in red here. Once you are done surveying the patch of area that you want to measure the NDVI over, you can press the button on the two data loggers simultaneously for 10 seconds to stop the data logging. 